If you see one of these looking down on you, that can only mean one thing. I came out to Sella in Washington State, drove three miles up a very bumpy road where the deer and the antelope play, all for a closer look at this light bridge terminal from Terra. Compared to the giant microwave antennas that surround it, that small cone-shaped powerhouse the size of a traffic light can transmit up to 14 times more data per second using the power of lasers. Fiber optic is widely considered the gold standard for a speedy internet connection, but laying all the cable required takes a lot of time and money, meaning people living in more rural communities are often left underconnected. That's where Terra's Lightbridge terminal comes in. Using a laser that transmits the same frequency of light that's used in fiber optic cables, Terra says it can deliver fiber speeds without the fiber itself. We take very high speed connectivity and extend it to places that don't have it. The laser is invisible to the human eye and to my camera as it lies between the visible light and infrared parts of the spectrum. But if you could see it, you'd see something like this. You're talking about beams that are as narrow as a chopstick that are pointing to a grain of rice on the other side. The distance from this terminal to the one on the other side is about 10 miles, and Kelly here pointed it out to us. He also explained how the heck you aim a chopstick-sized laser at a receiver the size of a grain of rice over a distance of about 10 miles. You kind of generally get it pointed in the right direction, and then our field techs log in on their computer, and they have what's called a web GUI that you can fine-tune it to your target. It's almost like a scope that, that you'd see, and you just point and click with the, the mouse. That all sounds interesting, but if this technology depends on lasers, what happens when something like a bird or some idiot waving his hand gets in the way of the signal? Yeah, you will see a brief interruption, but we have built-in algorithms and software inside the terminal to detect that there was a brief interruption, and we have a repeat request, which is a retransmission of the data, so the other side doesn't even notice that brief blip of uh, loss of packets because we are able to detect it and retransmit it. Fog can also cause issues as it scatters the beam of light. In severe weather conditions where the free space optic may drop out for a little bit, we at least have, uh, keep the lights on if you will, we have uh, underlay uh, microwave to keep uh, customers up. Terminals can be chained together to cover longer distances, and multiple terminals can be installed at the same location to increase the amount of data that can be distributed. You could put it anywhere. It could be on a cell tower like this. It could be on the side of a roof of a building. It could be on the ground. Terra has been deployed at locations around the world, including several countries in Africa, India, and Puerto Rico. If you want to read more about Terra's laser internet, check out the fabulous article on CNET by Joe Supan, who I tagged along with for this video. What do you think of laser-based internet? Let us know down in the comments and subscribe to CNET for everything that makes you say what the future.